guys and welcome back to another M Creator tutorial. Now before I get started I just want to apologize if you hear a fan or whatever in the background because I have my fan on and we're supposed to be getting a extreme heat wave. Today um, Canada has issued a environmental warning for uh, extreme heat and it's supposed to get up to 43 three celsius today so i yeah i have all the curtains closed and everything like that our ac's on but it's not really great right now for this kind of hot temperature at 30 degrees sure it will cool down the place enormously but not not 43 anyhow uh sorry for the um noise if you hear any uh right so what we're going to be covering today is the area script that i have recently learned it's not my original idea but i have uh had to create it from scratch learn how to do it and everything like that from the templates now i'll explain how to create it from scratch and uh, explain what basically it does so i have a little system set up here so you guys can kind of see what's going on with the script and i have a command um well not really a command it's just a way to um, print out ores in the area so we can use this little string here and if we type it it will well not right now but it will uh, print out any ores in the area so if we go over here where this gold ore is and then type it you can see that it will print out the gold ore within that rare area and then it'll print out the coordinates of that particular ore so we know that it's at negative 93 uh, positive 98 and uh, positive Z60. So if we go into our F3 screen, look at the block and then look at the right hand side, it will give us the exact same chords. Again, we can confirm that by seeing opening up the chat box and it says negative 30, uh, 93. That's correct. Negative or positive 98. Yep. And Z is 60. So that's exactly where that word is. Uh, now, how the script actually works is I have it set up to test for a um, 16 radius area. Now, I'll explain again how that all works, but uh, we actually need to run the repeaters uh, 33 times because we have to go from one side, that's 16, then we have to count the block that we're in, which is actually 17, and then we need to go another 16 blocks out, and then we need to do that for all three directions so northeast south west and up and down so there's only three repeaters we actually need to do if we offset the actual coordinates now when you're actually running the script it will run it at your feet so that's just one thing to keep in mind when you're actually running it from a player um, this in indicates where the the um, script is actually run from the red is where it's run that's where our head level is and as you can see the running it from a 16 block radius is actually going to test for all this area inside this box here so it's going to be a really big testing area now generally you don't want to do this for things like update ticks um, for blocks or um, things like player update ticks or world tick updates and stuff like that because this will lag your game quite a bit uh, one thing that I did want to point out is right here is where the border is so if we run the script from this cobblestone block where the center is it won't come up with any ore but if we move over one block it will so we can even run it from here and it will run and detect that ore so it's exactly this one cube area that it will be detecting with. So let's go into mCreator and I'll show you the script at first and then I'll show you how to build it. Okay, so we have only one procedure. It's a uh, player sends chat and what we're doing here is we're just testing for the actual message that the player sends so in our case we're getting a text dependency so to get the text dependency I'll basically quickly cover that if we go to advanced and then there is text dependency now you won't actually find a dependency dependency block for text so you're gonna have to use this particular block here 
for a text dependency. And all you need to do to basically get that to work is call it the same dependency uh, name as the dependency in this little box here. So in our case, it's text, as you can see up here. And this will basically require that particular dependency and tap into that um, system for getting the player that player's text that they print. So in our case, I've basically just compared the text dependency, so the message that the player is printing, uh, because we know that the player sends chat, so this would be the dependency. And then we're just getting the uh, text that we want to basically test for. So in our case, I put an exclamation and all capitals for the word ORs, and that's basically what makes the script run. All right, so this system is, is pretty much as simple as it gets. If I remove this and this part right here, all this is just the repeater for basically testing the area itself. So you will need two local variables for sure. Oh, pardon me, three lo all three local variables. You'll actually need one for position X position Y and position Z. So once you basically get those all set up, then what you're able to do is create three repeaters. And what the repeaters do is basically run the script um, a number of times uh, from the first Y, and then I'll run it from the first uh, Z position. So this would be your Y. A repeater for the Y coordinates. This would be for your Z coordinates and this is finally for your X coordinates. Now when it actually gets to the center part, um, now Y will be running for the first time, Z will be running for the first time, and then the inner part will be running for the first time, but it will go through 33 times. So in our case we are offsetting the coordinates by 16. So this is basically what we're setting the variables to. So we know that we need to actually go 16 times 2 plus 1. And this will create a perfectly center area that we're testing for in a 16 block radius. So in order to do that, we need to run these three repeaters at a uh, 33, 33 times each, and that will count the center block where the player is standing. So basically the inner part here basically counts up the variable. So again, we're setting the variable to negative 16 from the place that is actually being run from. In this case, it would be the player. And then what it's going to do is actually get the value of itself and increase the value by one and set the new value to the x coordinate or x position. And what this will do is count up the amount of coordinates. And when it gets to the finished 33 one, it's going to go into the actual z coordinate one and it's going to reset the x position. So that we're just basically using this script up here. We're resetting x and then we're going to increase Z by one, and this will do it 33 times until it gets to the Y, which will basically do the reset X and reset Z, and then increase Y by one. Now, if after this, after Z is actually finished completing, it will start processing the X again for the um, 33 more times. So there's actually, to kind of break it down of what it's doing is you're multiplying 33 by 33 by 33 and that's the cubic area that it will be testing and um, again it will only run a total of how many times it needs to so in our case yeah, whatever 33 by 33 by 33 is then once it's finished it won't do anything now in order to actually run the script inside you need to use the variables to determine where the actual system is. Now Forge actually has a built-in command or tag, I guess you can say, for blocks like ORs. So I've basically used the block for ORs here and I've gone Forge colon ORs and this will detect any ORs in the area. Now this 
this area we're detecting any blocks so every time this block is or this procedure is basically run um, in the repeater then it's going to test for the current location where the coordinates are in the repeater so the coordinates actually update as the repeater moves so it's going to do one line of x and then it's going to shift it over on z and do another line and then it's going to move up a layer once all those once one uh, air like one level is complete so that's basically what it does in the sense that how it operates so we need to test for the location of basically where it's running from every time this is where we actually put the part of the procedure it goes in the inner part of the x area and what this will do is it needs to be run before the actual x coordinate uh, is updated and then we basically do our event inside this particular condition so in our case I've basically set a local variable for printing out in a send message down here and then I've basically just gotten create text width and then I've basically used some color codes converted the block that it's basically testing for using the position here and then I've converted that to a name that the actual text can read. And then what I've basically done here is just printed out the X, Y, and Z coordinates of the block as well. So that basically runs here. And then all I'm doing after is basically sending, basically printing out that variable, this variable right here, to the player uh, that's basically run the command. So that's basically what it does. Now you can put any type of condition and event in here to basically run a other script, but it's important to remember that the larger of the area that you're testing, the more lag you're gonna have when it's actually running because it has to test for every block in that area, which is going to put a huge performance on the computer that you're actually running it from. So it's important to only use it for things that need to be triggered once and not use it for things that repeatedly uh, actually test for this area. Things like update ticks, player update ticks, world tick updates, things like that. Even block updates can actually cause this to lag quite a bit. So it's important to make sure that it can be triggered only when it's needed. Um, now let's go and build this from scratch. I think that'll be a good section to cut and then we'll start from scratch. All right, so the first thing that you need to do, I'm just gonna cover the parts in here uh, for the first thing. Uh, we don't really need to worry about the text dependency. We just need to worry about how to create the repeater itself, and that's the most important part of what this tutorial is for today. So we're gonna ignore all of this stuff here, and we're gonna start from scratch in a new procedure. So let's create a new procedure, just as a demonstration one. And I'm just gonna call it this, so we can just start from scratch. So the first thing that we actually need to do is import our or set up our local variables. Now we don't need global variables or any other variable types like MBT, although it is possible to use. Not recommended because um, we don't really need to store those variables to the player or anything like that. So uh, local variables are actually erased after the procedure is run. Now, because it's a repeater, uh, those repeaters are actually considered part of the same uh, procedure run cycle so we can actually use local variables to um, just test for the entire area and not need to worry about them resetting beforehand so we will need three number variables we're going to create one called pause x and then we're going to set this to a number variable and then we're going to do this for our y coordinate as well so we're going to do pause y number and our final one is going to be pause Z. So this will make up the basic part of the repeater for our test location. Uh, the next thing that we need to do is we actually need to define those variables and where we're going to be offsetting it. So we're going to set this to um, our X, our Y, and our Z location. 
So we want to offset this exactly. Let's do eight blocks instead. This will do a 16 by 16 area for testing. And it will also show you how this can basically change a little bit. So we'll set a math operator. And then what we're going to do is we're actually going to offset this negative x coordinates from the place that it's going to be running from. And then what we're going to do is we're going to set this to our offset of eight blocks. And then we're going to duplicate this for every coordinate side. After which, I'm just going to grab any block that has all three X, Y, and Z, and I'm just going to place them in the corresponding coordinates for each variable that we are using it for, and then we can delete this after. All right, so that part's set up. We have our basically our offset for when we start the actual test, and now we need the repeaters. So we're going to actually grab our repeaters from the flow control, go into our flow control and place that down. We also need to go into math, grab a number. And now this is where the, the part comes in for detecting how many we need. So we know that eight plus eight is actually 16. And then we have to take in consideration of the location where the block is actually being run from. So 16 becomes 17. So we need to set every repeater to 17 if we want a square area for testing. Now you can set these numbers to anything you want, but uh, in order to create a perfect uh, cube, then we need to set it to 17. All right, so after we've done that, what we need to do is we actually need to duplicate the X coordinate, place that under the second repeater after the first or uh, third repeater, and then we need to do that for the same for the third repeater. We also need to duplicate X and put that into our third repeater after the second and third cycle has finished. All right, so now after we've done that, we need to actually use our X and we're gonna duplicate this. And rather than basically use this script, what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna delete at the X coordinate. We're going to set the operation to plus we're going to set the value to plus one and then we want to go into variables and we want to get the X um, variable so we basically can increase the value of X position X by one. We're going to put that into the repeater of the center part where X is actually going to increase for the number. We also want to do this for our Z coordinate. So we're going to update, clone this part and then we're going to update the variable to Z and we also want to do that for Y so we're going to place this down here and set the variable to pause Y instead. So again that's basically how it's set up. Now if you wanted to do something like test for a specific block in the area we could actually do that as well. All we need to do is we need to do is get the block itself we're going to get a if statement and then we're going to get a operator for testing for the block and we're going to test for the block by getting it and then we're going to delete the coordinates because if we were running it at the coordinates that like this it will test for the player's um, current location not the location that it's testing from that's why we need to use the variables that we set so we're going to just get these variables here and then we need to test for the block that we want. So in our case, we can just test for a diamond block and that would basically test if there's a diamond block and then we could, I don't know, give the player, um, if, the pl if it supports the player, then we would want to maybe give the player something like add to inventory uh, we'll test, uh, we'll give the player a diamond, a gold block. We'll give them a gold block so it'll be easy to d determine. Um, where's the gold block? There we go. So we'll give the player, the current entity, a gold block. Now, if you want to actually run this from the command itself, now I did show you uh, recently the script that I used. So if you want to add this particular setup, then what we need to do is actually run it from the global variable player sense chat and then we're going to get a condition and then we're going to go to logic and get a string operator this like 
pale green one. And we're also going to need to go to advanced, get dependency. We're going to set this to text. And then we need a text field. And then we're going to get the text. So um, let's go with uh, block all capital. And then it'll test if we print out all capital the width word block. And then we're going to basically test this area for if there's any diamond block. So let's uh, go back into game after we run this script and make sure to save that and save that. And then we will see how our script works. All right, so I am in that same world that we're at. I'm just going to go down here and place down this diamond block. I'm going to get rid of it from our inventory and make sure that we have nothing in our inventory. And then I'm going to type uh, capital block and we should get a golden block for that. So again, if we go a little bit further out, uh, we need to test for eight blocks. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then we'll run it from here. And we should still get it. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, try one more block just to be on the safe side. And it doesn't run. So that's basically how it's set up. Now, if we wanted to run it from this direction, so we'll go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and that should be the ninth one, I think. So again, that doesn't work. This doesn't work because that's exactly eight blocks that way, including the ninth block being this part right here. So um, yeah, that's basically how it all works. Uh, if you want to set up the repeater, if you have any questions, um, definitely comment down below. And if I remember to check the comments and stuff like that, then I will try my best to reply. Other than that, I will provide the repeater script and everything on GitHub on its own re repository. So you guys can easily get the repeater script that you, that I've done in the tutorial. And I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out.